Hi guys, in this video we're going to have a look at how we uh, do direct proportion. Okay, so first thing we need to understand is when we um, say direct proportion, what does that actually mean? So when you have something, in this case it's just called y and x, just nice and simple, if they are directly proportional, it just means that as 1 increases, so as y increases, x also increases as well. Now what we need to find out is by how much does that increase, okay, or what's the relationship between the two. So to do that, we set it up in this way. These questions are really quite nice because actually it just tells you exactly what you need to do. It says y is directly proportional to x. So this is how you write it. So y, and then we use this symbol here, which means proportional to x. Okay. Some uh, students in my class like to call this the fish symbol. If that helps you remember it, coolio. So this is basically saying that y is directly proportional to x, and like I said, we need to find out what the relationship between the two is. We know they're both increasing, but we don't know by how much by. So what we do is we create a formula by saying y equals, and then we use the variable k, which just means a constant, and then that is times by x. And this is what we're going to find out. This is the relationship between y and x, this k, okay, this constant. And when you get a question like this, It'll tell you that y is really proportional to x to help you set this up, and then it'll give you two values. In this case, x is 30 and y is 45. And we can use them into our uh, new formula here to work out what k is. So let's do that. So y is 45, and that equals k times x, and x is 30. Okay, so 45 equals k times 30. Then it's just a little bit of rearranging, so either using the balance method or flowchart. I'm going to use the balance method in this particular case. So k times 30, because I'm times it by 30, I do the opposite and divide both sides by 30. So 45 divided by 30, 1.5, and then obviously k. So k equals 1.5. Once you know what k is, go back to your formula up here, y equals k times x, and put k in. So the formula here would be y equals 1.5 times x, or 1.5x if you like. Cool, once you've got your formula, you can now actually answer the question which it initially asks you. Find y when x is 20. So all I've got to do now is put x is 20 into my formula. So y equals 1.5 times x, well x was 20. So 1.5 times 20, so y would be 30. And you are done. Okay? And it's the same process no matter what you're doing. So what you'll probably have in the exam is something like this. Well, there's lots of waffle, and you've got to get to the point or highlight the key bits that we want. So let's go through the next one. The weight, W, I'm going to put W down because that's a key bit there in grams of a piece of wire is directly proportional directly proportional to its length L and that's what I care okay so there's lots of waffle going on there I don't really care about it all I care about is W is directly proportional to L that's all I want so there we go there's the first step now I'm going to make my formula so W equals the constant times L let's carry on reading a piece of wire is 20 centimetres long, so the length is 25 centimetres, and it has a weight of 5. So weight of 5 when the length is 25. So let's put those values in. So weight of 5 equals K times L, which was 25. Okay, so again, rearrange this equation to get what the uh, K is, what the constant is. So I'm times it by 25. So I'm going to divide both sides by 25. So that gives me 5 over 25 equals k. And I'm just going to simplify that to be 1 fifth. You can use a decimal if you want, like we did up here, or you can keep it as a fraction. It does not matter. Okay, so in this particular example, I'm going to keep it as a fraction just so you can see both. So go back to your formula, which was w equals k. Well, k is now 1 fifth. So 1 fifth times l. There we go. And the question says, what is the weight of a 30 centimetre piece of wire? So the length is 30 centimetres. So W equals 1 fifth times by 30. 
Well, times them by one fifth is just the same as dividing by five. So we have the answer of six. Okay. So one there with a decimal, one there with a fraction, doesn't matter which way around you do it. Sometimes it's easier to, to have a decimal. Sometimes if it's a recurring decimal, it's easier to keep it as a fraction. Okay. So there's two examples. Let's have a look at some more. So here's my next uh, two examples. So a little bit different here. This time, y is proportional to the square of x. So this time it's slightly different. We still have y. We still have our proportional symbol here. But this time it's the square of x, or in other words, x squared. So just be very careful that you do pick up on the square of x. The next steps are exactly the same. We still go y equals the constant times x squared. Now I've still been given two values to substitute in. So y is 60 equals the constant times x squared. Well, x is 6 squared. So 60 equals k times 36. And again, I'm just going to rearrange this by dividing by 36. And then that's going to give me 60 over 36 for my value of k. Now, this is an example that if you were to do 60 divided by 36, it goes to 5 over 3, but if I press the SD button, you can see it's a reoccurring decimal. So don't be fooled into doing that as 1.6 because you'll get the wrong answer. Keep this one as a fraction. Because see, there you, go, there you go, it's reoccurring. Keep it as a fraction as 5 over 3, and then you won't get into any trouble. Okay, so if it's a reoccurring decimal, don't use that. Use the fraction, it's much safer. So let's put that back into our formula. Y equals 5 over 3 times x squared. Excellent. And then what's it after? Find the value of x when y is 135. So this time, y is 135. So I'm going to come over here because I'll probably have a little bit more space. So 135, which is y, equals 5 over 3 times by x squared. So I want to get rid of that 5 over 3. At the minute, it's timesing x squared. So I'm going to divide both sides by 5 over 3. So let's have a look at what that is. So 135 divided, I'm going to use my fraction button there, 5 over 3, 81, lovely. So 81 equals x squared. Again, I'm going to continue to solve this. So the minute is x squared. What's the opposite of squaring? Square rooting. So I'm going to square root 81, which will give me x. Well, sorry, square root both sides. So obviously that's what I get. And hopefully you've already spotted it. That the square root of 81 is 9, so x equals 9 in this particular case. Cool. Let's have a look at the next one. The mass m, okay, so we've got an m, is proportional to the cube of the length l. So this one here is the cube, so it's l cubed, okay? So again, just read the question, make sure you set this bit up correct. So if this bit is wrong, Everything else, no matter how good it is, will also be wrong. Let's make our formula then. So m equals k times l cubed. And again, I've got l to be 0 0.2 and m to be 90. So let's substitute those values in. And 0 0.2 cubed. OK. So I'm going to use my calculator here again. Because I'm going to divide. At the minute, I'm doing 0 0.2 cubed times k. So I'm going to divide both sides by 0 0.2 cubed. You can obviously work out what 0 0.2 cubed is and then divide by it, but let's just save that work. So 90 divided by 0 0.2 cubed, and that is 11,250, and that's what k equals. Go back to our formula up here. m equals 11,250 times l cubed. Happy days. Two questions here. One, if L is 0 0.3, what is M? Well, let's substitute it in then. So M will equal 11,250 times by 0 0.3 cubed. Let's have a look what that gets us. Times 0 0.3 cubed. 
Okay, so that's 303.75. Happy days. And this time, if M is 2000, what's L? So this one's going backwards. So if M is 2000, I'm going to have, I'll do it here, 2000 equals the 11,250 times by L cubed. So rearranging this, I'm going to divide both sides by 11,250. So let's see what that is. What is 2000 divided by 11,250? Let's leave it as a fraction. 8 over 45 equals L cubed. And the opposite of cubing a number is the cube root. So it's cube root 8 over 45. Let's do that. So the cube root, if I press shift and the square root button, there's my cube. Excellent. And I want a cube root 8 over 40. Ooh over 45. Ooh, that's horrible. Let's round that to two decimal places and say 0 0.56. Obviously the question, it might tell you to round it to something else uh, or significant figures or decimal places. In this one, I'm just going to round it to two decimal places. Okay, so that's an example of a cube. That's an example of a square. And there's one more to have a look at. So just bear with me a second while I just get that sheet. which is this one here. So this one here, again, we've got A is directly proportional, this time, to the square root, the so square root of B, okay? So that's the only bit that's different about this one. Make sure you set it up correctly, and then the, st the next steps are exactly the same. So A equals the constant times the square root of B. We've got being given two values here, so A is 20, and that equals k times the square root of 16. So I don't need to calculate it for this one, I don't think. So k times the square root of 16, well, the square root of 16 is 4. So k times 4, I'm times them by 4. I'm going to divide both sides by 4 by solving the equation. So 5 equals k. Put it back into the formula up here. a equals 5 times the square root of b. And now I can work out these two questions. So if b is 81, let's substitute it in. So a equals 5 times the square root of b, and b was 81. So a equals 5 times, well the square root of 81 is 9. So 5 times 9, 45. There we go. 45 happy days. And the final one I'm going to do for you today is when a is 60, so plug that into here, or substitute it in. So 60 equals 5 times the square root of b. So rearrange this, and the minute I'm times in by 5, so I'm going to divide both sides by 5. So 60 divided by 5 is 12, and then that's the square root of b. Now I just want b. What's the opposite of square rooting? Squaring, so square both of these. So 12 squared is 144, and the square root of b squared is just b, that's why we do it. So that one there would be 144. Okay, guys, so it's a couple of examples of just basic uh, direct proportion, a few squares, a cube, and a square root. So hopefully that covers everything that you'll need to know with direct proportion. Cheers.